It all started on a rainy night in September, as I sat at my desk trying to come up with a solution for my rapidly deteriorating life. As an alcoholic who had lost everything due to my addiction, I found myself reaching for the bottle more often than not. My family had given up on me long ago, and I was slowly descending into madness from the isolation that came with my drinking problem. However, one fateful night, while scrolling through Amazon Prime looking for something else to buy to numb the pain, I stumbled upon a self-help book called Satan's Solution 101, Harnessing Hellfire for Personal Growth. Intrigued by the title, I ordered the book without any second thoughts, hoping against hope that it would provide some kind of relief from my misery. But little did I know that the contents within those pages were going to change my life forever, yet in ways beyond my wildest imagination. Within a week, the package arrived, and after reading the introduction, I knew I had hit jackpot. Satan's solution seemed perfect, promising to give me access to demonic forces which could help me conquer my inner demons once and for all. And so began my journey down the path of destruction, led by none other than Beelzebub himself. That night, I lit candles and placed them strategically around my room before settling down on my bed. Taking a deep breath, I opened the book and read the incantations out loud. At first, nothing happened, but as I continued reading, there was a sudden chill that ran down my spine. The air turned cold and heavy, and the hairs on the back of my neck stood up. Suddenly, a presence filled the room, and I felt something brush past my shoulder, as if someone or something had taken residence inside the room. Fear gripped me, but I tried to focus on the task at hand. Who calls upon Satan? boomed an unseen voice echoing throughout my small apartment. I, I call upon you, I stammered, trying to control my trembling voice. Please have mercy on me. Help me overcome my affliction. The voice huffed disdainfully before replying, Very well, what wouldst thou desire? Ask not for things beyond thy means. For in hell, we crave sacrifice. Excitement coursed through me like never before, knowing full well that the Dark Lord cared little for me or anyone else in the world. Soon, it didn't take long for strange events to happen in my life, with seemingly random occurrences taking place every day. For instance, whenever faced with a difficult situation, such as dealing with my boss at work, I simply invoked the power of the devil and suddenly found solutions appearing before me, as if they were magical. People started treating me differently, almost as if they sensed an unknown force behind my words. Life became better as time went on, even though I couldn't explain why. I soon noticed that my problems, no matter how complex, evaporated overnight, replaced instead by opportunities beyond my wildest dreams. Before long, my drinking decreased significantly, enabling me to attend meetings regularly and make strides towards recovery. Friends and family members who previously ignored me now sought out my company intrigued by the changes in my behavior. Even my job performance improved, leading to recognition and promotion prospects. Eventually, my reputation spread far and wide, attracting followers curious about the secrets to my success. However, amidst these positive changes emerged warning signs pointing towards troublesome consequences. 
One afternoon, as I lay exhausted on my couch, I heard my three-year-old daughter crying inconsolably in her room. Rushing to comfort her, I discovered she wore a permanent grin resembling that of the devil himself, her eyes gleaming with sinister intent. As I picked her up, warm tears streamed down her cheeks, but instead of fear or sadness, I saw satisfaction in her expression. My heart pounding with fear, I whispered a prayer, asking for forgiveness, hoping for salvation from whatever wrongdoing I committed through Satan's influence. But the worst was yet to come. Over the next few days, my daughter developed additional peculiar characteristics that both terrified and fascinated me. She spoke fluently in Latin, recited Bible verses backwards, and displayed remarkable telekinetic abilities that shattered items within our home during temper tantrum. While these incidents occurred infrequently, unfortunately, despite their efforts, my friends and family refused to accept my explanations, insisting I seek professional medical help to address the issues my daughter supposedly possessed. As much as I desired to believe otherwise, I acknowledge their concerns carried validity considering recent developments and the fact that my own behavior shifted for the worse since embracing Satanism. Nonetheless, stubborn pride kept me from surrendering this newfound authority over my chaotic existence until a traumatic event forced me to confront reality head on. One evening, during dinner preparations, my wife accidentally knocked over a vase containing fresh flowers onto the kitchen floor, creating a terrible mess. Enraged by the commotion, I snapped at her harshly before turning away to tend to our son. Without warning, however, I experienced flashbacks of Beelzebub's earlier promises of human sacrifices needed to appease his dark hunger. Feeling compelled by this malevolent urge, I glared at my partner and children, conjuring images of a blazing altar surrounded by black-robed figures chanting ominous invocations in my mind. Panicking at my sudden lack of control over these murderous visions, I excused myself to calm down and regather my sanity. After several moments spent hyperventilating in my car, I re-entered our living space, only to find everyone missing except for a single note scribbled on the dining table. We love you too, Dad. Goodbye for good. May God guide your soul toward true salvation. Shaken to my core by these unexpected departures, combined with mounting evidence of irrevocable harm wrought upon my loved ones, thanks to Luciferian influences, my arrogance finally crumbled. Sobbing profusely while curled up on my basement floor amid scattered occult paraphernalia strewn about, I reached for the phone with quivering fingers and dialed the Vatican's, and dialed the Vatican's exorcist hotline, begging for spiritual intervention. As I waited anxiously for the line to be answered, desperate prayers for divine assistance filtered my lips reminding myself that the road to redemption was still within reach. Minutes felt like an eternity, but finally, a voice broke the silence on the other end of the line. Vatican Exorcism Hotline. How may we assist you? Tears streamed down my face as I poured out the events that had unfolded since my ill-fated encounter with Satan's solution. 101. The person on the other end listened attentively, their voice filled with compassion and concern. My child, it seems you have been ensnared by the darkness. But fear not, for God's mercy knows no bounds. We will send a team of experienced exorcists 
to your location immediately. Stay strong and pray for the protection of your family. Relief washed over me, and with renewed determination, I gathered the remaining shreds of my faith. I started cleaning up the remnants of my association with the occult, destroying the books and artifacts that had led me astray. Each item discarded was like a weight lifted from my soul, and with every prayer I felt a glimmer of hope for salvation. The team of exorcists arrived later that night, armed with their faith and the power of God. They performed the ancient rites of exorcism, calling upon the name of Jesus Christ to cast out the demonic forces that had plagued my life. The room crackled with energy, and the air grew heavy as the battle between light and darkness waged on. Hours turned into an eternity as the exorcists fought valiantly against the malevolent spirits that had taken hold of my family. The house shook, objects flew through the air, and unearthly screams echoed through the halls. It was a terrifying ordeal, but I clung to my faith, knowing that only through God's grace could we be saved. Finally, in a blinding flash of light, the darkness retreated, leaving behind a profound silence. The exorcists emerged from the room, their faces weary but filled with victory. It is done, one of them said, wiping sweat from his brow. The evil has been banished, but the road to healing will be long. Seek solace in your faith, and never forget the power of God's love. I thank them profusely for their bravery and guidance, realizing that it was only through the intercession of God that we had been saved from the clutches of darkness. With a heavy heart, I reached out to my family, begging for their forgiveness and vowing to make amends for the pain I had caused. Days turned into weeks, and with the support of my loved ones, and the strength of my newfound faith, I began the long process of rebuilding my life. I attended therapy to address the underlying issues that had led me down the path of addiction and sought guidance from spiritual leaders who helped me navigate the complexities of my faith. Slowly but surely, my family started to heal. My daughter's eerie abilities disappeared and she returned to her joyful self. The scars of the past remained, but we faced them together, holding on to the hope of a brighter future. Today, I stand as a testament to the power of redemption. I share my story with others, offering them a cautionary tale of the dangers of seeking easy solutions to life's challenges. I warn them of the darkness that can consume us if we allow ourselves to be swayed by the allure of forbidden knowledge. Though my journey through hell was arduous and painful, it ultimately led me back to the light. I am forever grateful for the mercy and love of God who never abandoned me, even in my darkest hour. And as I walk the path of recovery, I know that my story serves as a reminder that no matter how far we fall, there is always hope for redemption and a chance to rebuild our lives. For just $3 a month, you can have your name featured in my YouTube videos and descriptions. Not only will you be supporting my channel, but you'll also be immortalized in the credits of my content. If you're looking for something a bit more personalized, consider becoming a $25 a month patron. I'll voice your stories and bring them to life on my channel. Create a special drawing just for you, or even write a unique story tailored to your interests. So don't hesitate. Join my Patreon community today and help me keep the spooky stories coming. And remember, together we can save each other from the YouTube algorithm. Thank you for your support.